Tonight we're installing uh, Grand Foss's latest and greatest uh, hot water recirc pump. So this is the Alpha HWR. You can see 1555 SU/T. This is the uh, SKU, basically. So they make three SKUs that are kind of common you can get. There's like this size. There's a size smaller, and uh, something else. So anyway, this is the large pump here and set for half inch, three quarter, and one inch lines for research for uh, numerous purposes. So I'm installing this on a uh, 200,000 BTU hot water tank and this one is not outfitted with a research connection so some of them are f with the Navians you can get them with uh, three water ports on the bottom so they're ready to go for external research or internal research, but this one, yeah, it doesn't have it. This is like the cheap version you can get at Home Depot that anybody can buy. So if you're not a uh, HVAC kind of person, a licensed gas fitter, this is sort of what you're gonna be able to purchase uh, off the street and bring home to put in your place. So this house, uh, I've replumbed it with uh, a recirc to the left a cold in the center and a hot on the right hand side. You'll see that there's a union and a check valve and a uh, expansion tank here set up. I have about 90 psi water coming into the property so I put that tank in a year ago. I think I set the pressure accordingly. You have to adjust the air in it and you can see it's all three quarter inch lines so there's a recirc that goes to the end of the house and back because I knew I didn't like tankless hot water heaters for the wasted water with the original tank system there was enough convection in the house that you'd always have water kind of nearby hot water but not with this system here so there's not a lot of space to install it but basically the intent is that this is the recirc line here. I'm going to be just taking off this ball valve and putting it in between here and here and somehow have the uh, relief valve shoot past it. So I did buy the inch and a quarter isolation valves here and what you'll see is um, that there's the screw fittings for adjusting the isolation when I put this in, I'm going to need to rotate this face 90 degrees and it's going to block access to the fittings. So this is not entirely ideal. I can kind of understand now why you can get flange fittings instead of uh, these inch and a quarter kind of uh, unions. But we'll make it work somehow. We'll be able to get the wrenches on it and uh, get this done. I do have isolation valves on the other side of the wall for these three lines so I have them isolated and I'm just going to drain them quickly. So we're right underneath of my uh, kitchen right now in a little crawl space. So I think we'll look through the uh, packaging. Like This was hard to get. Like It actually took me two months to obtain this pump. It does come with a check valve that goes into the uh, outlet, I believe. It comes with uh, a couple of washers for the uh, face fittings here, but the uh, the kit also came with those washers, so I've got two sets of them. There's uh, some half-inch trade size plugs, one plug for the box, and then there's an electrical connector to plug in here. So I did need to buy a cord end for this. So I just got a run of the mill cord end here. And I recommend getting it from a big box store. If you get it from Amazon, it may not be legal to use in North America. And uh, I got a uh, strain relief for the cord end so I could plug it in. And then I've got a, a GFI to plug in here. You could hardwire it with a uh, disconnect switch of some sort and uh, that would be an option too but I just wanted to have a cord end. Simple thing to control 
and then we're going to set it up in the app as well. And the neat thing about the Grandfoss app is you can download it and you can go into demo mode and you can pretend you have anything from Grandfoss and go in there and play on the settings and learn how the product works before it shows up at your job site or what have you. So I think that is pretty cool. I haven't seen that from other vendors with their apps. They seem to be kind of lacking generally. And then for the uh, to connect the cord end to the plug, it's got some lever style job here that you can just slip the wires in and grab onto them. So I might need to trim these back a little bit, but it should be uh, easy to go. So I am gonna get the system drained down and get the uh, pump in. I'm not going to get into the sweating lines. That is a, a thing on its own. I enjoy doing sweating for the most part. I have learned to do pressure tests with air before putting water to them because if you're going to have a leak it's better to know with air than it is to find out with water. But I do use map gas because it does behave a bit better as far as if you got a bit of water in your pipe you can uh, hopefully boil it down. I have a low point drain, so I'm gonna be okay, but that's my thought on it. If you wanna get into the PEX systems with the stretch fittings from like Upinor, they're supposedly quite good. I wouldn't use the little ones with the uh, crimp connectors. Those fittings, like they only have like a quarter inch hole in them, so you do not get enough water with those. You want the external stretch rings if you're going to use uh, plastic piping. So I'm going to jump on to the, the next stage of uh, setting this up. Okay so I got the uh, isolation valves fitted here and I tried to re-sweat this fitting here which is kind of tricky but uh, so I had to do it twice but other than that things are looking good. So for the check valve that goes on the outlet of the uh, pump this is it here. So you just slide that dude in there, I would imagine. Where's the other way? I probably should have looked. Let's think about this conceptually. How is this supposed to work? Water is going to leave, so it should go that way. There. It's in. So the O-ring goes in first, and it fits in there nicely. These isolation valves do have some plastic on them, so I chose not to sweat them with attached. So I am now going to get this pump into position and uh, we'll start setting it up. Got the uh, pump in place and I've separated the electronics from the housing here. So one thing I had to do to get this in here, I haven't worked with flanges that much, I picked something up from the millwrights at work last week. So I put this in without the uh, gaskets first and then I was able to separate it. So I would I left one side of the flange on with the uh, fitting without a gasket and separate the other side and separated it and dropped the gasket in and then put it back together. That was the only way. Like trying to slide this in with gaskets on either side is not going to work. Like in a bigger setting, you would use come-alongs or chain falls and separate things. But for this little machine here, it seemed to work. Then I'm using a four millimeter Allen to separate the pump. And if we look on the back, you can see the uh, pump side of it. So there's a square ring that seats it with the housing. So now I can put it back in position. No interference. I can get into my isolators here and there's no leaks so I'm happy with that so I'm gonna put this on and get it energized in a second. I did turn the uh, tankless back on and uh, purged it of air so basically I valve in everything first and then I run it in the kitchen just upstairs here and run the water to uh, draw any air out of the machine because it could be hazardous if it's firing without any water in it. I don't know if it protects itself very well or not. So just to be safe, I just purge it of air first. And then I also drained a pail of water out of the bottom here. 
in hopes of getting any junk that might have been in the system. So the only place that has air in it will be a bit of this recirc pipe. I do have the recirc valved in on the far end where it loops back. So these two valves are holding as designed so that you can service the pump as required. I don't know how often that would be, but you can take it apart and uh, work on it. And this one's all stainless, which was the intent of for a potable water system and all the fittings and solder and everything I've used is also uh, lead free. So in the past I used to use Teflon tape by itself and I had decent success. But I found that like when you're doing a bunch of different connections all at once and if you have one Teflon failure it's very annoying because you could have to take it all apart to fix it which is what happened here. So I started using uh, thick Teflon tape, like this is the Masters Orange, and it is good, but I do also give it a shot of uh, pipe dope as well on top. It's kind of annoying. It's, uh, I don't think it's a skill thing. I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I just haven't had luck with it lately. I don't know if the... Uh, fittings have changed or if it's me that's changed or what it is but I've had to turn to that to get reliable fittings and it's all worked out so I'll keep an eye on this for a, an hour and make sure it's not dripping any but it's in a location where it's harmless if it does but still good practice to keep an eye on things so um, like I said I'll get this button back up and to get it powered up all right so the uh, cable grip worked out nice there's not much space for that uh, lock nut. It's a plastic box, so a plastic connector is good. And then you can hopefully see the wire arrangement. So I didn't need to trim the plastic back or anything on the uh, conductors. It was good with the insulation stripped the way it was. You just put one in at a time and you give it a little tug test to make sure it doesn't pop out. So let's uh, plug this thing in and see what happens. It's going wild. It's trying to run. I have it bottled up so it can't work. So I better open it up. And give it some water to play with. It's probably just trying to get rid of the air. Seems like it is uh, driving the heater a bit, which is kind of as planned. I haven't connected an app to it yet. It's just set to auto adapt. I guess in theory it would work just like this without even using the app. We will connect to the app here. We'll just give it a bit of time to figure out what it's doing. One difficulty I have with this is there's a temperature range that we'll see when we're setting it up. And uh, I think they, if you have it too cool where this is located, it will switch to um, cycling on a schedule because it can't uh, predict the uh, temperature drop correctly. And then all of this uh, copper tubing should have armacell on it as well. So between insulating the pipe and having this in a warm location would help. I could have put it inside the home, just on the other side of this wall, but I kind of wanted to keep everything kind of together and it's sort of like a free freeze protection so like this thing will protect itself from freezing if it gets too cold in here and then the uh, if it circulates the water once in a while that's another bonus freeze protect and then I've got a, a security camera pointed at the area for the door and the uh, temperature in here so I can monitor it as required I don't know what that means. I um, don't have the manual with me, but it's all pictograms anyway. 
So I don't know how useful it really is. But I can tell that it's not circulating water anymore. I don't feel it, but that the pump is only like an inch in diameter. It's just a like tiny little thing, right? You see when I had it apart, just that little hub on the face is all that moves water. But I don't feel or see, hear any water moving or air moving. So I'm going to get the uh, App started and this machine doesn't need to be told it has an external pump on it one of the main reasons I picked this device is because it is meant to move enough water to trigger a tankless hot water system and make it make hot water some of them don't move enough water to do that and you'll just be pumping cold water throughout the home so you don't want to do that. Now I'm just trying to find the app for this. Yeah, so it's the Grunfoss Go is the app we're going to be using. So you can uh, go into connect and stuff like that. But if you don't have the device yet, you can go to plus. products rather actually I'm going to be fumbling here I don't remember exactly how to do this I felt like if you hit the plus it would do it search alpha HWR doesn't work, so I've ran into this problem previously. So someone in the home is calling for hot water right now. All right, so I ran into this problem previously where it's hard to find a demo, but I do know it's possible. So, um, don't know what else to say other than it's possible. So it's found the Alpha HWR already. Press the button on the pump. It's not the most tactile thing. So set it up. I don't want to schedule. I want tankless. And external control, no water aquastat so I guess you could leave it on uh, external control and when the tankless uh, sees hot water coming back that's hot enough it will turn off for temperature control I want this on auto adapt and when I was in demo mode that wasn't like obvious how to set it that's right so when the temperature of the pump goes outside of 50 to 95 it will start running on a timer auto adapt okay so it is on there so it's going to try to run the water to 38 start venting the pump so it's triggered the uh, pump so I'm just going to put this as uh, home. If you had a bunch of these, if you were a service person, you could uh, do it a different way. So it shows how much time it has left in the venting process. 
Now that should be what it's going to be doing is it's drawing from the uh, recirc, which is the far end of the hot water, and it's going to be pushing through the pump out a check valve into the cold water side of the uh, tankless hot water and it can't leave through the cold water feed because I have a check valve just past that expansion tank so it's doing something just to uh, get the air out of it it's going to do that for 10 minutes I don't think we're going to watch that I don't know if how it's achieving removing the air but it, you can hear that the uh, tankless is picking up here and there it sees something's going on the uh, control for this is inside the home so you can't actually see it the control panel seeing what it's doing because it's just an inaccessible location so um, I guess I uh, I'll play around with the app here quickly so you have some temperature set points estimated media what the heck I just screwed it up we need to trend data somehow view all metrics oh yeah so it's pumping like the wrong way that's, uh, I guess, negative gallons per minute. It shows the head. I guess that's not quite right. It's going backwards. It's got RPM. It even knows the voltage of the pump. I guess it would need that for watts. All right, I guess we'll just let the 10 minutes run, and then you'll uh, know what to expect when you commission one at your home. So it gives you a kilowatt hour, so it must know amps, or it, somehow it's determining amps based on voltage to make power, which is watts. I've always wondered about the head and how that works, if that's like pipe friction plus the upper limit of the home, or how it works. Because this uh, is three feet below the, um, ground floor so the uh, faucets on the second floor would be eight feet plus three feet plus maybe a foot for the joists and then another three feet to the faucet just to give you an idea on the actual head versus the uh, measured head We got four minutes to go. It's really putting it through its paces. You can hear things are happening in there. I don't feel there's any need to uh, stop it. But I'm hoping that this is a, a good solution for the house. I knew this was going to be a problem to tankless without our research to begin with. And uh, I was right. So the far faucets weren't getting water for hot water for quite a while they do talk about a cold water sandwich as possible sometimes I don't know if this is going to alleviate that or not so there's going to be warm water in the pipes then you call for hot water you're going to exhaust the warm water in the pipes and I don't know how long it takes the tankless to respond with um, hot water again because it might pass a bit of cold water before it gets fired up I'm not too clear what that response time is but maybe with the heat capacity of the copper tubing because it's like a hundred feet to the uh, far end that it should warm up the water enough that maybe it's not like, overly discernible so I'm not getting any uh, warm water coming back yet I can feel warm water exiting, without a doubt. That's the cold water, which uh, 
wouldn't be needed unless there's demand on the system. And this is doesn't have any hot water coming back yet. I've got the tankless set to 120 Fahrenheit, and that's kind of that's the maximum of this model unless you override the uh, protection settings on it. Oh wow, this thing is like pulsating. It's having a fit. Hmm. I guess the whole uh, enclosure is uh, sealed for flue gases. I never noticed that but previously. Oh, I'm starting to get some uh, warm water coming back now. So like I said, I do need to put armacell on all the uh, piping to keep the heat in the water and make the system run a little bit more efficiently. You can get a insulating pouch to go over the pump from what I believe, but I haven't seen it for this model, but they do offer it for other models. And I hate to say it, but they all look the same, so maybe that pouch can fit from anything, I don't know. Yeah. I imagine you can hear the water circulating through this. I don't know if uh, this is showing rotation or not. If that's what that's trying to tell us. Because it's rotating in reverse rotation currently, like counterclockwise. But then the other, the big one, is going clockwise, so I don't know what the heck is going on. So uh, I guess we'll look at the uh, tankless connection. So this is a ream. So it requires uh, a three quarter to a one inch line connected to it. This is a three quarter. It necks down from one inch just on that wall there. So it's we got like an inch and a, a quarter line coming from the uh, gas rate meter. And that seems like it's been adequate. We haven't tripped anything out. You have to do some uh, piping sizing to figure out what is appropriate. We have gas rated valves. Um, I can't get a good look at that valve otherwise it would tell you what to look for for when you're buying a gas rated valve. Then you have to buy the uh, flush kit separately. This one has the flush and the uh, fitting for the uh, temperature pressure safety valve all integrated. Sometimes they are separate so you need to be careful in what way you stack these components because you wouldn't want to isolate the tankless and also isolate this from the tankless. It needs to be able to relieve. If you were to go and turn off the uh, water outlet for whatever reason because that's exactly what this is for. So when it can't send water anywhere and it's heating up, it needs to expand somewhere. But this one, it's like a three-way valve. So when you adjust this valve, it's always sending water here. There's nothing to worry about. And then, so the flush kit is here. I haven't gone through the flushing process yet. This has been on for a couple of months. It may be appropriate to flush it, but like I used the garden hose and I blew down the lines quite a bit to make sure there was nothing in them up front. And then it's get a good to have uh, drains set up here. I use brass nipples in a lot of locations because it's less soldering and it, if you can figure out what spacing you need, it works pretty good. And I'm not to avoid soldering, but it's just quicker. So why not? This piece I need to have field assembled, so that's why I soldered it. 
and uh, well, we may actually be through most of the purge now because we have a watt display showing here. But there's still definitely water trucking through that pipe there. I can still feel some air coming through. But there's definitely water coming through too. And it warmed up, but it's not like brutally warm. But it is warm, it's sending warm water into the cold side of the tankless, which is what our intent is. Not necessarily to send a, a pile of hot water through, because there's not much of our purpose of that. You're just trying to warm up the water in the loop and then stop realistically. I'm going to take a look on the phone and see if it's got anything new to say here. Yeah, so it's done doing the uh, air purge. It does not have an estimated media temperature yet. I would prefer to see this in Celsius being Canadian, but uh, haven't looked around to see if that's possible or not. But I guess I'll know tomorrow morning if this is working when I get out of bed and try to get ready to go to work on the first person up. So I think that's all we're going to see for now and uh, I guess I'll give this a day or two and I'll see if I can get any more footage out of the uh, app before I release this so uh, we'll, I guess I'll be back in a second but it'll be a couple of days in my life. Okay, so this is the uh, system in a steady state when it's not working. So uh, this is actually just a second after I was filming. I didn't uh, do any long-term testing yet. So uh, what I found was this is where I got to when things were done. I was able to change this to Celsius. I had to uh, log into my account and then grow into my profile. And that allows me to uh, pick metric units. It's not a problem having uh, an account with Grand Foss. They're not a pain in the butt. Like uh, setting one up with Bosch is like ridiculous. They want you to upload your uh, business registration and all kinds of stuff. It's uh, kind of annoying. So we've got our uh, temperatures here in Celsius. And uh, so we've got overview again. Products. I'm not sure how to go into demo mode yet. Ah, oh, here we go. Let's try that. So we searched, we can pick one. I don't know, somehow you can get into demo. I don't recall. I wish I could show that to you, but I can't seem to figure it out. But in remote, so again, you could add a schedule if you wanted to, but I don't want that. I just want this to have warm water available. It's supposed to run the pump quite a bit initially until it's sort of happy and it's kind of got things figured out so you'll hear it working a lot as it's building its algorithm but then it'll home in onto uh, an appropriate schedule for your home. Like it'll know that I'm getting up at a certain time every day during the week then there's some other people getting up after myself. It'll get all that figured out, hopefully. I looked at other brands like uh, Taco or Taco and then some other ones, but nobody had anything that was like set up to work well with an app. And it didn't really consider tankless hot water heaters very well. And uh, they wanted you to put in like buttons around your house to run the water and temperature sensors and everything. And this, if it holds up to its specs, I think this is the best solution. It was for myself. It costs some money, but it seemed 
to me like it'd be worth spending it. It also, uh, they have a way of measuring energy ratings of these pumps and this one is uh, quite good. I can't recall the uh, parameters of how they call it but I remember seeing that it's sort of like Energy Star. It gives you a, kind of a, a line to graph of where it sits in the world compared to other products and this is a good one. I had looked at maybe using my uh, Lutron lighting control system to do this with a non-smart pump but decided that this was uh, the easiest way out if they spend a bit of money and it's uh, guaranteed to work. So again like this machine is cycling on and off with people upstairs using the hot water. This hasn't run but it will at some point but it will find out that there's already hot water fairly far in the loop and it will come back quick so it will know to turn off fairly quick so that is good and uh, no leaks so I'm happy about that so I've kind of got my tools and junk tidied up that's sort of what I've got this is my bin for three quarter and one inch fittings I got another bin for half inch fittings and uh, what have you it was a different size allen key for this uh, cover plate I'm not sure what it was I ended up using a uh, imperial because I did not have a metric that would fit in my set but uh, yeah so then I hang, hung the extra gaskets here and man they're really giving this poor thing a workout <laughs> imagine how many cycles these things have over a 20 year period every time someone touches a hot water faucet it springs into action whether it actually gets to perform or not so uh, again yeah we'll uh, test this out for a day or two get some data in the app and I'll be back it's been a week now since I installed this pump and I'm quite happy with it it's doing what I wanted it to do so uh, one thing I did learn when setting it up it's good to set up a schedule because there's probably eight hours a day where you don't need to have hot water so you can set the schedule so that when you're sleeping the system is not circulating to create hot water you can set it up for like 10 or 15 minutes before you wake up so that it's uh, done its job and made warm water and you're kind of guaranteed to have the hot water still in the pipe whereas uh, if you're on the far end of the uh, time then it might be a bit cooler so I found in my bathroom which is the farthest place and we don't have the full research set all the way up to that point yet it uh, has kind of like lukewarm water or it did the first day before I set the timer so it was like a bunch of lukewarm water you had to wait for that to pass before you got hot water and now it's uh, hot water after you get that first little shot of cold water through because I don't have the uh, recirc all the way so I'm quite happy with it my wife has noticed that it's uh, working the way she expected it so it's really we're back to having like a, a tanked system with the benefits of a tankless where you can run it indefinitely without uh, worrying about running out of hot water there uh, are some sketches online that show you can use like a small electric hot water tank in line with a pump like this to prevent the cold water sandwich as they call it but in my home with the distance of copper we haven't had any cold water breakthrough so I'm happy to say that I'm um, looking in the manual this pump does run counterclockwise so that was something I was kind of confused about initially during the install it uh, the app is good we'll take a look at that in a minute so it will tell you over a period of time like how much how run time is on the pump and uh, so the first time you look it's going to be some silly number but if you give it a day it'll give you a, a real number for runtime. I think it runs basically five minutes out of every 20 minutes basically with the algorithm for my home and that'll probably change over time I haven't been watching it or logging it although the software will do that to some extent so it's quiet you don't know that it's here 
So it's the perfect situation, right? Like it does its job without impacting your life. It just works. So that's good. I did find the uh, manual, the paper flip chart I'd mentioned before. So it doesn't really say much about it. It's all pictograms for the most part, so you got to figure out what it's trying to tell you. So I just get the software going here. And I found that you don't have to pair to the device like pushing the button. After the second time of pushing the button, it stopped asking at that point. And for remote, I found the demo mode was right there in front of my face. I didn't see it for some reason. So you can use that. So you press to connect. It's going to start blinking. It knows something's going on. I'm going to press connect. And uh, what I think we're going to see is that it's going to... You don't need to push the button. So being this isn't a crawl space, I can just interrogate it from my kitchen above now. I don't need to mess around with coming down here to, to look at things. Um, what did I want to say? So that's right, so you can set schedules right here. You can make it more complicated or what have you. You can do one for each day depending on how you uh, live your life. And uh, so the temperatures I've 35, 39, those are good numbers. Um, let me see what that is. If you go to profile, you can switch it to imperial. Never heard it called US customary before. That's interesting. Yeah, so then we're going to go back. So 105, or sorry, 95 and 102. And I think I mentioned earlier this machine runs at 120. So that's good. I want to flip it back to a metric. Temperature, I prefer metric measurements. It depends. So you can look at your data here. It will tell you your head, which is really helpful for knowing if you're at the max of the pump or not. Because like I said, I need to extend my system. So the last two digits is actually the flow, as it turns out. So the 55 and the part number is like 5.5 meters ahead. Sorry, not flow. So I'm at 3.2, so I've got something left yet for uh, its capability. And it's funny, it's just that tiny little impeller in there that does the job. Then we'll go into the Ecobee. So I found that this system without the pipes insulated in here is working like a radiant heat system. It's definitely warmer in here. So I, I bought an external sensor you can see right there. That's for an Ecobee. And it's not part of the uh, temperature control, but as you can see, it's 23 and a half degrees in here. And uh, it's traditionally a bit warmer in this area than the rest of the house. So the ones that are white, they're contributing to the control of the furnace. And the ones that are black are just in the house, not contributing to the control. So I hope this thing lasts a long time. It was expensive, but uh, I imagine it'll pay for itself. I could calculate how much water I waste normally in a day versus having this and like it's massively different so that's good because you save on your water and your sewage fees and you've got hot water so you're saving time so it's good all the way around as long as this thing delivers because it was kind of pricey I think in Canadian dollars it might have been like a thousand bucks or something like that no that doesn't seem right probably six hundred dollars but um Anyway, it's uh, I'm happy with it, and uh, I guess we're going to wrap it up. There's not much more to say, so thank you for watching.